Welcome back to the Richard Sherman Podcast. It's your boy. Well, I got a chance to go to Seahawks training camp this week, and boy, they look good. Offensively, Gino! <laughs> that boy is trying to stack another great year on top of that. I expect him to get another MVP vote this year with that receiving core. He got Jackson, Smith, and Jigba, DK Metcalf, and Tyler Lockett. Going to give people fits. That offensive line looks very good. Those two rookie tackles from last year, second year now, look really good defensively. In the middle, Bobby Wagner. That's all you got to say. You know your defense going to be all right. You got B-Wags in the middle. In the back end, Julian Love and Quandre going to be one of the most formidable um, safety tandems in the league. Both very smart, playmaking, sound tacklers. The scheme looks good. Uh, you know, Nwosu, Jaron Reed's back. Uh, they they have some dynamic playmakers on that D-line. They're going to find a way to get Jamal in the positions to do the things he does well, which is blitzing. He's going to be disruptive. Uh, Tariq Woolen got, you know, he was getting some run this week coming back from the injury. So he looks still looks good, looks very fast and tall. You know, all the things that make him great, he still has. Uh, Witherspoon was battling a little bit of an injury, but he'll be back out there soon. I think this team is one to watch. Them, the, them and the Niners for the NFC West. I think that's going to be a great battle. It's going to come down to the last game. That's why the league does it that way. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. And while I was there, we took a trip down memory lane. I got to catch up with my girl, Allie, from The Volume. She asked me some questions, and, you know, I gave my best answers. You know how I do. Got to explain some of the, you know, this one time I had a wardrobe malfunction in the game. Uh, lost a shoe. We talked about one of the most clutch players in Seahawks history, Jermaine Curse. Got to talk about him. Uh, got to see Uncle Lee, my boy. Got to talk about, you know, more interceptions. I guess, you know, it's all about interceptions. So, and this one time I didn't intercept it. I just tipped the ball away. But, you know, that one kind of speaks for itself, I guess. Malcolm intercepted that one. But it's a lot of fun being back in the facility around all, all the old teammates, the new team. Uh, Talking about Bobby getting a, a a ring of honor spot while he's still playing, which is totally, that t- totally can happen. I mean, it'd be cool. Do it. Then I got a chance to catch up with the Rook, JSN, and just ask him how he feels in a new environment. He's in the NFL now. He's come from the Ohio State University. Brian Hartline, <laughs> receiver U is what people are calling it. But them two LSU boys got something to say about it right now. Jamar Chase and Odell and, uh, and uh, Justin Jefferson, I mean, it's hard to argue. They're, they're two of the top receivers in the game right now, but there are a lot of people coming out of the Ohio State, too. Uh, but he he's great. Uh, I look forward to seeing him on the field a lot more. He's going to be an incredible talent this year, an incredible addition. Check it out. All right, we're over here at the facility. Iconic photo, right? Shotgun for Kaepernick. Takes the snap. Looks. Fires near side. Going for the end zone. Ball is picked <laughs> up and after it. Is it picked up? Is it picked off? It is! Richard Sherman tips it. Malcolm Smith picks it off in the end zone. We are going to New Jersey. Holy smoke! The defense does it again! Well, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? I want it to be remembered just like this. I one-handed intercepted this ball, and it was the end of the game. You see, you just grip it one hand, kind of like Odell did. That's that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. (laughs) I wish. When I saw it, somebody called, captured this picture, I was like, man, I wish it happened like that, where I just gripped it and came down for the game. NFC Championship, sent us to, oh, man, that would have been crazy. But this was my first target of the game in the NFC Championship. And uh, I batted away. I got a PBU. A friend of mine caught the ball, and the game ended. It's the way I remember it. That's the story we're sticking to. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. Then, then, then one of my friends came and interviewed me after the game, and we talked about the moment. Russell takes the snap. He's going to throw down the middle. He's got a man. The ball is caught. Game over, baby. Touchdown. The game is over. The Seahawks are going back to the Super Bowl. Jermaine Kirst, the most clutch player in Seahawks history that does never gets enough credit. Every Super Bowl we went to, he scored the go-ahead touchdown. The one against San Francisco, he scored the go-ahead touchdown. He scored the game-winning touchdown here in the Super Bowl that we lost. He almost scored the game-winning touchdown in that at the end. Um, just a clutch player, but in this game, it was just crazy. We were down, what, 16-3 at halftime, so something silly. And with two minutes to go, I think we were down 19-7. to 
And most of the people had left, at least Seahawks fans, you know, except the diehards. And I'm sure everybody will remember themselves staying until the end. But the stadium was empty. They had even started to build the uh, the podium in the Packers locker room because it's two minutes to go. You're down 12 points. Like, game's over. And, you know, the chaos that ensued. But clutch curse, baby. Big time player. Houston Texans with a third down. Going to throw a bootleg. Intercepted. It's Richard Sherman at the 45 to the 20 to the 10. Touchdown, Richard Sherman. Could you take us behind this photo? What's something that people don't know about it? Well, you see how clean my outfit. Usually I don't care too much about it. I'm pretty basic when it comes to swag. But this week I had bought these shoes. I bought them in the summer because we were wearing wolf grade uniforms and they matched so perfectly. And the league had a policy that you're – you could only wear shoes that were team colors or black. So they had to be blue or green or black. And I took these because they matched our uniform, but usually you could sneak by it. And I had pretty much snuck by it most of the game. And then I freaking has th have this interception in a crucial moment, and they show it on ESPN again and again and again and again. And they, they sent me a letter saying, you're wearing the wrong footwear, $10,000 fine. And I was like, oh, such a cool moment. And y'all stealing it from me. It was a great play. It didn't affect anything. But crazy. yeah, that's crazy. You know, uniform violation technically. But look how good it looked. Like, good night. It matches. It matches. <laughs> Shotgun snap. Throws a line drive pass. Caught at the 10. Down to the 5. Diving in. It's Calvin Johnson with a touchdown. Oh, wait a minute. He no was signal. hit and he fumbled out of the end zone. Do you know what? Cam Chancellor punched the ball away right before he hit the goal line. All right, take us behind this photo. So Pete's philosophy, especially on defense, if you give us an inch, give us an inch and we'll protect it. So even if we're backed up all the way to the goal line, if you give us an inch, we'll protect it. And this is this is Cam's give you an inch moment. I think Cam had one, I had one, Earl had one, and it was Megatron's going in to score right here. This is the end of the game. This touchdown would have won them the game, and they, they're at the one-yard line. He literally punches the ball into the end zone and biggest play of the game, but the craziest controversy didn't happen until after when KJ tapped it out, and now everybody's a rules expert, and like, you can't do that! The rule specifically states you can't bat it forward! But that that was a crazy play, and it was a really cool play, and, and just the epitome of fight to the end. Kaepernick throwing, and it's intercepted by Richard Sherman! So this play, this was Thanksgiving. First off, they're making this play on Thanksgiving. You already got a little bit of attitude. You're supposed to be at home with your kids. You know, getting fat, watching football, not playing it. But say, if they're going to make us play, you might as well make a few big plays. I had two interceptions this game. I think we won 19 to three. And so, you know, I ended up going to San Francisco after this. You know, everybody was really upset about the moment where I ate the turkey on the field. Um, but in the moment, you're not really thinking about eating turkey on their logo. But the crew put the, put the turkey on the logo. They brought it out. I didn't tell it, you know, I didn't know we were going to win the game by what we wanted by. And I get player of the game. And I always told him, if you didn't want me to do that, your team could have won. And then you would have been sitting there, your players eating turkey on the middle of the field. It would look like a celebration, like a parade. But you can't let the villain get there because then it goes really bad. And they let the villain. Near side for Manning out of the shotgun. There's a ball. It's hit. As it comes out, and it's picked off by the Seahawks. Far sideline, Malcolm Smith. The lead to the boom. The Seahawks defense. They do it again. Holy catfish! So this picture is iconic because, well, it's the Super Bowl and they're hitting Peyton. I think this is the one he threw. Malcolm intercepted it and took it for a pick six. But that's not what's important about this. Cliff Averill and Chris Clements, you see all the pressure around him. They're in his pocket. But the big three, and people don't understand there was a big three here. It's Cliff Averill, Mike Bennett, and Tony McDaniel. And they will make sure you know this. We didn't win a dang thing until they got here. And we didn't win a dang thing after they left. The big three. We didn't win nothing without. Thank you to Sony for giving me a sneak preview of the Gran Turismo movie. You are in this race. Get in the fight. Yes, sir. My goodness. It's everything a fan would want who would say, hmm, I think I can do that. Man, I'm a video game player. I'm a Madden player. I could coach Madden and get to actually do it. This is Gran Turismo. These players, they knew the track better than a lot of the 25 year old vets. They knew the cars better because that's all they've done. They've sat there on video games, studied the track over and over. And I think some people, you know, when you're talented, 
You just kind of play it by ear. But Jan was over there getting ready for his races, listening to his Kenny G and his Inya. I usually listen to Drake and Lil Wayne and some Tupac, you know, a little different. But it was a cool experience just to to see the ups and downs. You know, it's not sitting in a in your video game. You actually have to condition and work your body, work your muscles. You're always rooting for the underdog. So you're rooting for him the whole time. And it was an experience. You guys go check out the movie. Gran Turismo, based on a true story, is exclusively in movie theaters now. Rated PG-13. I might have to go see it again. All right, welcome back to the Richard Sherman podcast. We got one of the two first round rookies, JSN. How are you enjoying your time? Enjoying it, man. Blessed. You know, thankful to the man upstairs, you know, that I'm in this position in Seattle. Uh, just ready for, you know, to get the season started and ready to ball. Well, you look great. Um, rave reviews. I've never heard Pete talk about a rookie. We talked about it earlier. You're like, he's not talking to me about it. He ain't never going to give you the credit in person. <laughs> but he's talking the way he's talking in the media. They really believe in you. Do you feel that belief and confidence? And you guys have probably one of the top receiving groups in the National Football League. You know, obviously, you got to get out there on Sunday. But how are you feeling? Yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, I'm grateful. Uh, BK and Tyler and, you know, the coaching staff definitely instill a lot of confidence in me. You know, confidence that, you know, I already, you know, have. But it's about proving those things. And, uh you know, I can't wait for Sundays, you know, to be able to do that. Well, they keep this oh, this receiver you debate. You know, I know you're still <laughs> young and you're fresh out, so I know you care. Yeah. Um, but they say LSU, they say Ohio State. You know, there's some Bama boys that got a say in it. What did you think about that whole argument? Man, I mean, you can't go wrong with, with the Bama boys, not going to lie. But, you know, you know, it's O State, you yeah. know, all the way with starting from, you know, the very beginning. Mm -hmm. I feel like you starting with Chris Carter, yep. Joey Galloway, you know, I, the list is the list is very long. Mm -hmm. And um I feel like, you know, we got we got multiple multiple people in the league right now and upcoming um to to prove that. So. I mean, the rookie of the year race last year offense rookie of the year, you had Olave, Garrett end up winning it. Garrett is poised for another great season. Olave and people talking about you, you're going to be in the race obviously clearly part of this offense. It has to be something in the water. You guys have a great receiver coach there. Tell me about your relationship with him. A uh, great relationship. You know, I, I love Coach Brian Hardline. Um, you know, he's been in the league for multiple years. So he he has that, you know, genuine and real experience, mm -hmm. you know, to to give us real, uh, what's the word, real, you know, he can coach us. Yeah, you know, yeah he coach, clearly. He's been, he's been there before. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we trust him at the end of the day, you know, to make the best decisions and, um, you know, he keeps us, you know, motivated and making sure, you know, every time, you know, we're at practice, we give it, it, it we give it our all. And, um, you know, great recruiter, you know, bringing in a lot of guys. But, you know, that room is special, you know, having guys that love to play ball, um, want to learn, want to grow and, and want to help each other out, but also want to compete with each other is what I feel like, you know, brings us to the next level. Talk about that crazy game you had where you had 300 some yards and just going nuts. I mean, still one of the craziest games I've ever seen. I mean, I don't know if I want to run 300 just by myself. <laughs> um, what 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 was it? Was it just a perfect rhythm? Was it just everything working or just they just couldn't guard you that day? Uh, I would say a lot of all those things. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would it. say a lot of all those things. <laughs> you know, having the opportunity to get uh, the C-16 balls thrown your way. And, you know, I'm the type of player, you know, if I get those opportunities, I'm just going to try to make the most of it and um you know I, I did that that night you know it was it was good to be out there my first time out on the west coast yeah and uh you know just feeling that vibe feeling that energy and you know having to get a win being down uh you know trying to put the team on my back necessarily yeah, and it. uh you know get the duh yeah i mean and now you're gonna be on the west coast a lot more yeah you know you got to get used to the time difference and mm -hmm. all that tell me about that adjustment because that's usually big for anybody yeah i mean First time I was here was in a Rose Bowl, and I fell in love with it, honestly. Um, you know, just the vibe, the weather, you know, the the scenery is, is something I like. You know, I joke with uh, CJ Stroud a lot and say I'm a West Coast kid now. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I just I just love it out here, and, you know, I'm happy, you know, I'm out here. It's got to be cool to have so many of your peers in the league. You know, I'm sure you still talk to Garrett and Chris. Um, Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be next year. They're talking about top five, top two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you got to take pride in the ability to know that, hey, when I was in college, it wasn't like, hey, we've seen people that ain't going to be in the league. You're seeing guys that are going to be in the league making huge impacts and you're about to make the impact. Do you feel like you were league ready when you came? 
Uh, 100%, 100%. And I give thanks to the development at Ohio State. Um, Coach Mick Marotti, our strength coach, Coach Brian Hartline. Um, I feel like, you know, they prepared us. And, and I'm thankful for the ones that came before me, Garrett Wilson and Chris, because, you know, I'm just motivated to, you know, be where they're at. And, uh, and they instill a lot of confidence in me. And like I said, the people here also. So, you know, I feel ready. But, you know, once again, it's all about proving those things and, and showing that on Sundays. Gino came off a record-breaking season last year. He's one of the, from what I hear, one of the best teammates. I've never had a chance to be on his team. But tell me your first impressions of Gino. First impression, man, just a, a real genuine dude, you know, honestly. Uh, easy to talk to. Um, you know, wants to get to know, want to get to know me, you know, on and off the field. And, you know, I know the quarterback position is the hardest, one of the hardest positions. I know cornerbacks too, but quarterback is, you know, one of the hardest positions, if not the hardest position on the field. And, you know, I just want to make his life easy mm -hmm. um, as possible. Um, as you see, he had a great season last year. And, and you know, I have total faith you know, in him and his abilities, you know, to take us, you know, to the promised land. So, you know, whatever I can do uh, to make his job easy, you know, I'll, I'm willing to do that. But, you know, just a great dude. Um, he believes in me and, you know, I can feel that. And, you know, as a receiver, that's all you want, you know, your quarterback to do is believe in you. And, um, yeah, and I appreciate him a lot. You, the, This team went to the playoffs last year. Um, they got loftier expectations this year. What are your expectations for your rookie year? My expectations is to help the team win, you know, mm -hmm. plain and simple. Um, when I'm on the field, you know, every ball um, is, is an opportunity for me um, and just be a reliable target. You know, when Gino looks my way, he knows that I'm going to make a play. And uh, like I said, just help the team win. I, I want to see this team go far. Um, don't really have a lot of individual goals, um, but, you know, the team goal is just to win a Super Bowl because we know that, you know, we have the team uh, to do so. Usually when you when you stay focused on team goals, the individual stuff. Exactly. Comes, comes like with it's that. supposed to. Yes, sir. Well, I really appreciate it. I don't want to hold no more of your time. you got to get your ice tub and all that, <laughs> but I really appreciate Thank you. Thank you, Legend. Appreciate Coming it. Home. Yes, sir. Thank Love you. Respect. Reminder, every episode of this podcast premieres live on AMP. So download the app, subscribe to me at Richard Sherman to tune in to all of our shows live.